Well, Jonathan and Andy, it is such an honor. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Mm, Emily, thank you so much for inviting us. We are delighted to be here sharing all of our sound information with your audience. Totally. What a gift. So thank you. Absolutely. You know, I have to be really honest. You know, I am the type that has multiple books that I'm reading simultaneously, and sometimes it takes me a little bit to get through them. But I will share that, you know, when I was reading um, Healing Sounds, I read that in a day. It just was such an incredible read. And I have a few others of your books that you've co-authored. So it's really quite an honor to get an opportunity to connect with you both. And, you know, I'm so excited. I'm curious to ask you, you know, how you got started on this magnificent journey with sound and how did the two of you meet? Wow. <laughs> John. Okay, I'll keep my story relatively <laughs> short, Emily. But it begins right around 1979. I'm playing in a rock and roll band in a seaside bar in Cape Cod. And I'm coming in with my band from a break, strap on my Stratocaster, start playing, start singing, look out at the audience, and become aware that the ambiance of the club was one of negativity and violence. Now, I understood that the alcohol and the other intoxicants that people were imbibing at the time were helping induce this ambiance of negativity. But I also realized that the music that I was creating at the time was also inducing this ambiance. And I had the thought, what if music could be used to make people feel good? Now, I've been playing professionally for 15 years, and I'd never had that thought. And within a week, that thought shifted and changed probably about five <laughs> or 10 degrees and became, what if sound can be used to heal? And from there, Doors just opened up, met a beloved person who became sort of our uh, dear mentor later oh, on wow. named Sarah Benson. We call her the uh, God, uh, mother of uh, sound healing. And she actually is uh, dedicated, dedicated to, in our book, The Seven Secrets of Sound Healing. And uh, from there, I founded the Sound Healers Association, got a... Uh, master's degree from Lesley University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, researching the uses of sound music for healing. And I took my record company and I turned it from a new wave record company to a new age record company back in the early 80s. And the only thing I didn't have to change was the name of the company. It was initially called Spirit Music. And what a great title for a, a you know therapeutic new age uh, sacred music label. So we kept that. It was originally uh, named after my dog, who <laughs> manifested in the middle of the night when I got back from my mother's funeral. You know, a full blown Samoyed that had telepathic communication with me. Whole other story <laughs> about that. But that was Spirit, my beloved dog, and my company is still now. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and and Emily, my journey has been <clears throat> quite a bit, <clears throat> excuse me, quite a bit different than that, uh, because I met Jonathan in 1995. So we have been working and being partnered and married for almost 30 years now. However, before that, I am a licensed holistic psychotherapist, and I was very involved with expressive therapies. And sound is, of course, the most expressive therapy around. And so I was connected to the world of sound, you know, just through my practice as a uh, psychotherapist. And uh, then I met Jonathan and we decided <laughs> that we would be together and here right. we are. And here we are and it's been wonderful, but I'm gonna backtrack for just a moment before I met Andy. It was a probably around 1991, and I was in deep meditation, and this being, if you like, came to me and said, you were to write a book, and basically dictated what the diff different chapters were. I went upstairs, wrote that down. Two days later, a friend of mine called and said, I've just become an uh, editor at Element Books. You have a book for me. I said, uh, 
how, how's this? And I sent him the outline. He said, great. Six weeks later, I wrote the book, which because it just flowed. And 30 years later, we have now the 30th anniversary edition of Healing Sound. So it's still wonderful. And that was the first book we've got now about a half a dozen different books, including The Humming Effect, Seven Secrets of Sound Healing. Chakra Frequencies. Chakra Frequencies, is the divine name. Yeah, but yeah. And, you know, sound is sound. And it's a wonderful, wonderful if you like, expansive portal to health, happiness, and consciousness. Because on a level, if you perceive of what our ancient mystics and our modern physicists agree, everything is in a state of vibration. And once you understand that, then you understand that everything, as the ancients used to say, everything is sound. Mm. From the electrons moving around the nucleus of an atom, the planets and distant galaxies moving around their suns, they're all in motion. If you can perceive of the motion as being a vibration, you can conceptually conceive of that vibration as being sound. Now, should I take this one step further and tell you the basic you. premise of how you use sound for healing? <laughs> well, if everything is in vibration, that means our body is in vibration. Every organ, every tissue, every part. So the chakras, the etheric field, all sorts of different aspects of body, mind, and spirit are in a state of resonance and vibration. And when we're in a state of health, we say we're in Sound health. <laughs> uh, we love that. So we're like this overall orchestra that's playing the symphony of the self. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful. The body is like this wonderful orchestra. But what happens if the second violin player loses their sheet music? They begin to play out of tune, out of harmony. Pretty soon the entire string section is off. Pretty soon the entire orchestra is off. And this is akin to a part of our body that is vibrating out of ease or out of harmony, we say it is diseased. So the basic principle of using sound as a healing modality is simply this. What if we could restore the sheet music back to that string player and get them playing back in harmony? What if we could somehow restore the correct resonant frequency to that part of our body, mind, or speak, uh, spirit that is resonating out of harmony and put it back into a state of health and coherence. And through sound, we are able to actually do this. And of course, through the many years that we've been teaching and writing and working together, we have used so many different sounds, different mantras, uh, different uh, exercises, different tools such as tuning forks and you know sound tables and crystal bowls and all of that. But Emily, what we have found is that the most powerful, powerful modality of working with sound is through our own voice and we all have a voice and so we focus primarily on the voice gosh well you both have already shared so much i just kind of want to like take that in for a moment because it's incredible to hear both of your stories and journeys and how you're using sound in so many powerful and interesting ways and the the collaboration and the synergy uh between the two of you is is quite beautiful and remarkable you know i will share for my own personal journey I started going to sound healing ceremonies and I just noticed a palpable and profound shift and I couldn't really explain it or understand, you know, why so much was taking place, but I feel like when I read your book, it, it kind of explained a lot of the science behind it. So maybe if you could share some of the actual benefits that one can receive through the medicine of sound. First, before we do that, I'm going to basically backtrack for a moment and just say so there are two basic ways that sound affects us. The first is called 
psychoacoustics. And psychoacoustics is when the we're listening. We're simply listening. The sound is going in through our ears, traveling through our auditory pathways into our brain. And there it is affects our brain waves, our nervous system, our heart rate, our respiration. So when we're listening to sounds, specifically sounds that have been created for healing, when we are listening, we are psychoacoustically actually working with sound. That's the first way. The second way is called vibroacoustics. That's where the sound goes into your body, affecting you or affecting us on a physical level, literally resonating us on a cellular level, going down to our DNA. And here's a quote from the New York Times science section. February 8th, 1988. So this is not new. Sound shaped into dazzling tool can make, break, or rearrange molecular structure. Wow. That's so, if you can rearrange molecular structure, what sort of conditions and situations cannot conceptually be shifted through sound? And with that in mind, we have been working primarily for the last few years. Mm, and you got the book? I do. Okay. With I do. the hum... Uh, and we have a, our best-selling book, The Humming Effect, our award-winning best-selling book, The Humming Effect. And Emily, it is The Humming Effect, Sound Healing for Health and Happiness. Now, you had just mentioned that, you know, the science behind this, you know, why is it that sound is such a powerful modality? The first chapter of our book, Healing, uh, The Humming Effect, and of course, in Healing Sounds, too, we have got uh, peer-reviewed research is the entire first chapter of our book because that will give people a real strong, solid foundation as to what happens when we are working with sound. And of course, we, you know, work with the voice. And so through the years, we have worked obviously with so many different mantras and sounds and exercises and it was a couple of th a few years ago right i mean <laughs> bottom line is that many people have difficulty particularly working with their voice mm -hmm. to well it's always been this way but particularly thanks to things like american idol <laughs> <laughs> terms like pitching all that and we listen to people go oh they're bored they're out of tune and this and that we become hugely judgmental about our voice so even people doing tones and uh, vowel sounds and mantras and whatever they get very very judgmental so we teach a workshop and come back a year later and say okay how many of you been doing these exercises and they haven't been we thought okay we've got to come up with a sound that everybody can do that people are not judgmental about it. it is all inclusive we looked at each other we went hmm <laughs> because everybody hums yeah well that thus the humming effect begun began to take shape and uh emily it's you know it's a, such a simple sound but we chose the hum because we had, of course, been working with that, you know, in our workshops and through our work with sound. And we chose that because we knew that we've never heard anyone say, you know, gee, I'm just not a good hummer. I can't hum. No, never heard that, you know, it's just like, yeah. You know. And people do have such judgment with their voice and with their uh, ability to, oh, I'm not a musician, I'm not a singer, how could I possibly work with sound? And so through humming, we've opened that door so that everybody can participate and understand what really is happening when you are working with sound. Right, and it's, you know, on a level, it's an all-inclusive sound. We love music, we love, I can do some uh, acoustic uh, acrobatic stuff that <laughs> might make your mouth drop in terms of, oh my God, how's he doing that, et cetera. But we want a sound that is all-inclusive, that everybody can do, that you don't put me or someone else on a pedestal and go, oh, how great you are. No, we wanna empower everyone. So the hum, but the thing was, who's going to take the hum seriously? Unless we 
The first chapter, as Andy was saying, is peer-reviewed scientific information about the physiological effects of humming, and they are drumroll. Drumroll. When we are doing, when and we call it, by the way, conscious humming, because it's done very consciously, and, you know, we teach different exercises, but when we are humming, Emily, on a physiological level, so much is happening in our body. Our heart rate is lowered. Our blood pressure is lowered. There are many hormones that are released, such as melatonin, and the interesting thing is what I think is oxytocin is the trust hormone. And, you know, people feel so good after they have worked with sound. Oh, yeah. So one of the things because oxytocin is being released and there is a, a molecule that is a powerful healing agent called nitric oxide. And Jonathan, why don't you share about it? Well, a lot of people it? are like, really yeah. into nitric oxide scientists and all that. But before I forget, before I forget, we want to say that humming is the most powerful vibroacoustic sound that we can make. And this is also why it has some effect, including the release of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide was actually the molecule, molecule of the year, I think, in 1998 uh, by Science Magazine. It is a vasodilator. So it basically loosens up your uh, circulatory system, allowing blood, oxygen, all this stuff to flow through your body better. But it's also, and this is very important these days, it is an antiviral agent. So that if you hum, and I'm going to just demonstrate as an example, and you hum nasally, uh, you get 15 times the release of nitric oxide in your nasal cavities that you do when you're doing what they call nitric oxide breathing, 15, which is, uh, if you like, at a therapeutic level. And we've had so many people write us and tell us, gee, mm -hmm. we have used this mm -hmm. humming for conditions such as sinusitis and other infections of uh, the nose, because there are a lot of little critters that lodge themselves in the nose before they get into the rest of your body. So if you... Mm, can do nitric oxide humming, uh, you can oftentimes uh, alleviate the, that stuff, which is hugely important. It is, I love that so much. Now, would you receive the same or similar benefits from toning as well? Yes, but not actually, the only real research that's been done, and there's, you know, in healing sounds, we, uh, I talk about some harmonic tones that are done through like, and back in the 1980s, I presented to uh, some doctors in uh, Germany, and I said, we call it Sonic Dristan, and uh, they didn't laugh because they didn't have Dristan over there. <laughs> But I knew that I had experienced the fact that it basically alleviates and opens up your, your sinus cavities back then. So certain tones, but not all tones. You see, the thing with hum, and listen, we're going to play with you for a minute. I bet you thought we were going to talk about World Sound Healing Day. We are. But <laughs> you know, right now, just the hum. So listen, I want you to start humming, mm, and then pinch your nose like this. Mm. Mm. And then pinch your nose. If you're, pro if you're humming properly, you cannot hum. If because you your if your lips are closed <laughs> and you go, mm, it just stops. Yep. Because yep. the total resonance is in the sinus cavity. Now, if you're going, mm, the sound is coming all out of the mouth and it's great for your ears, but it's less of a vibroacoustic thing. And interestingly enough, talking about the hum, because a lot of people are into yoga and it, there's something called the yoga sutras by a fellow by the name of Pantanjali's thousands of years old, the basis of all yoga. And here's sutra 1.27. This is Goldman's translation of it. A little sound bite. The original sound of creation was pranava, the humming of prana the humming of prana. They had to give it a name, so they called it Aum. 
Think about that for a minute. The ohm came from the hum. Mm, that's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to go back to something that you shared, Jonathan, in the beginning, which is about your journey from playing in a rock band in Cape Cod to really using sound in a powerful way with the intention of healing. And I feel like, you know, sometimes we think about music and, you know, it is a universal language. We can connect to music and so many people feel a resonance, but maybe they're not looking at it from the perspective of like, how can this heal me? Or can I use music in a way that is healing? What is, what, what have you found in terms of a formula to be able to use music to, to heal? Andy? Well, I always love to talk about this aspect, Emily, because about 40 years ago, Jonathan did through his studies as he was working on a master's degree in the uses of sound for healing uh, at Leslie University in, uh, in Cambridge. And he came up with a formula and that is frequency plus intent equals healing. In other words, the sound that we make plus the intention that we are holding when we are creating that sound, that coupled together is healing. And Jonathan has a great, <laughs> a great story about that. I don't know well, if you want to share that uh, or not. Well, what I'm simply going to say is that the reason I developed it is as I was getting all this uh, information together for my master's uh, thesis, I had a pile of papers that were, you know, yo high, and they were full of different frequencies and mantras for the chakras from different uh, doctors and all this stuff. And I was trying to correlate them together. The problem was, I believe, they didn't go together. They, there was a spiritual master would use one particular mantra for a particular chakra, spiritual master B, use a different mantra for the same chakra or vice versa. Dr. X would use a frequency for one organ, Dr. Y would use a completely different set of frequencies for the same organ. I, oh my God, how can this be? How can this be? I'm rocking back and forth in a state of intellectual angst because I, I can't buy it. My entire life is just you know ruined. <laughs> and this inner voice says, it is not only the frequency of the sound that creates the effect, but also the intention of the person making and receiving the sound. Frequency plus intent equals healing. The consciousness that we encode upon the sound is equally as important as the sound. I say this because we have become Since Healing Sounds, which is a wonderful book, but it helped bring up the awareness of using frequencies for healing. But the reality is that for the most part, number one, single tone frequencies mostly don't exist. They're actually harmonically related composite frequencies, which um, is a very important topic that perhaps at another time, but also the intentionality that we encode upon the sound. And at the time, I would speak to these different doctors and scientists and say, have you ever thought about the importance of intention when working with sound? They'd look at me like I'm a man from another planet, which I am, but they're not <laughs> supposed to know that. And now, of course, you have people like Wayne Dyer did this wonderful book on the power of intention. Masoro Emoto did this wonderful book on messages of water mm -hmm. showing how intentionality affects the crystallization of water and that polluted water looks like mud and gloriously, uh, you know, beneficial uh, intentionality creates snowflake like things. Dr. Bruce Lipton, good friend of ours, mm -hmm. um, basically has shown that, you know, the biology of belief, how much our belief, Dr. Joe Dispenza and the placebo, placebo effect, effect yeah. and Lynn McTaggart's been doing these uh, fabulous intention experiments. All these people have really gotten this now and it's so very, very cool. Sound is great, mm -hmm. but the composite sound mm -hmm. is frequency plus intent. Right, and, and, and it's interesting, Emily, you know, we can take uh, 
a sound or whatever uh, instrument, whatever crystal bowl, whatever we're working with, and we put an intention with that, that's where the healing goes. And I know uh, this morning we have had many, many things happening and I went, oh gosh, I got a little headache. And so what I started to do was just simply close my eyes, take a nice deep diaphragmatic breath and relax my body. And I started humming and I started imagining, visualizing, focusing that hum into that part of my head that was hurting. So with my intention and with my sound, I was able to eventually have it go back into balance. So with intention and sound, you can do a marvelous, marvelous healing, even on yourself with your own voice and intention. It's, it's truly amazing. And what I find is some of the most powerful healing modalities are just hidden right in plain sight. You know, we all have access to our voices, you know, and really when we combine that with a clear intention, miracles are are possible. And so I just I feel like people might be listening to this and going, gosh, you know, sound, can it really, you know, take the place of 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 whatever. Um, but, you know, I'm just inviting listeners to really explore this on their own. And that's something that's coming up for me right now is that say somebody is listening to this and they 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 feel a resonance. They feel like sound, you know, has has a powerful potential to play in their lives. Like, how would you recommend people to get started? I'm going to give all right. First of all, we are going to hold up the fabulous humming effect again. Andy is going to read this quote from Bruce Lipton, since it's a uh, a really great uh, quote. And we'd like to suggest that reading the humming effect will give you wondrous. We've had so much positive response, yeah. and just also as Andy, if you yeah, can read that, I do want to yeah. read that. But before I I read this <clears throat> great quote on the back of our book. Uh, when you said, how can people get started? Well, people that are opening up to the world of sound, you know, if they can uh, meet their interests where they're at, the humming effect is really that opening. It's that doorway that we know opens up to a wider world of sound. And it's, and it's just great for even what I was just talking about, but I do want to read the quote on the back of the book uh, from Dr. Bruce Lipton, who wrote the biology of belief. And he said, I highly recommend the humming effect for all those impacted by the modern world. It is a powerful, and I love this, it is a powerful non-pharmaceutical prescription for self-healing that has only positive side effects, such as harmony, health, and happiness. And so it is a wonderful, uh, opens the door, what did you used to call it, the gateway? Uh, yes, that humming <laughs> is, if you like, a, a gateway sound that opens the door to everything. But once again, you know, I've gone all over. I've worked with some of the most powerful, uh, if you like, mantras and sonic fields and, you know, all these different toys. We love them. We still do. But, you know, the reality is, number I'm back to humming now because basically, the <laughs> if you like, it probably was not the Big Bang, but really the cosmic hum that started everything. And the beginning mm -hmm. was the word. And I'd like to suggest that the more you begin to work with the hum, the more powerful it is. So for just as an example, I'm going to do a hum just because we're on the subject and I'm going to do a hum. And first, we'll show you this. Actually, we're going to do this for three times with you. Would you like to do that? Yes. And Jonathan, can you turn the original sound for musicians on so that we can hear you? You bet. Normally doesn't need this but it may be in your upper no I, I got it how's oh, that now it. all right let's see if this works let's and then uh you may be picking up a a, a fan but is this mm, mm. Is, can you hear that or did it cut yes. it out yep. all right so 
Okay. You start first, Andy. So we want to, we'll, we'll guide you, Emily, and our listeners through just a brief exercise so you can experience yourself the power of this. So let's just take a couple of nice, deep diaphragmatic breaths. We call that belly breathing. You can put your hands on your belly and breathe. Take that in breath and your belly will expand. You exhale and it'll relax. So we'll take a couple of nice deep breaths. We'll release anything where uh, that's not serving us in this moment with a sigh. And next we're going to breathe in and on the exhale, that is where we will hum. So we'll be breathing in and then exhale. And just two or three things. First of all, we want you to hum in a comfortable voice mm -hmm. that is very similar to your speaking voice, number one. Number two, we're going to have you hum on just a single tone, not zippity doo da or all over the place, but just on one tone. And number three, when we get done, and we're only going to do three three? three yeah. hums but after that we want you to just be in silence for a couple of seconds to feel the effect and number four before we do this check yourself out so you notice any difference that you may be experiencing before and after the hum and and i want to emphasize too that when we finish this exercise we will be in that sound in that silent place for just a few moments because that is a critical essential part of working with sound is being in silence after you have made that sound. Silence so. is the yin to mm -hmm. the yang of sound. And it's the place where the greatest shifts and changes occur. So whether you're working with bowls, whether you're working with bells, whether you're working with music or whatnot, that si place of silence, that stillness. And as Andy mm -hmm. says, well, silent and uh, listen, as we are listening within, silent and listen are anagrams. They both have the exact same letters. So when silent, you are silent, listen. When you're so silent, you can listen within. within. So, and that we, it is one of the pillars of sound uh, is to be in that silence after sound. So we'll first deep breathing, then making the sound and being silent. It's sort of a three part thing. We're just going to take a couple of deep breaths but you got to do the deep diaphragmatic breathing because that's the basis of everything. There ain't no sound without any breath. <laughs> and this is just to give you a brief experience of, of how you can feel after you have hum. So okay. are you ready? Jonathan? I am ready, my dear. Are you ready, Emily? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's close our eyes and we'll take a couple of nice deep belly breaths. Ah, I'm breathing out with a sigh. And now we're going to breathe in. And when we exhale this next time and these next three times, we're going to be exhaling out a hum. And make sure your lips are closed when you do this now. Breathing in and hum. Hum. Mm. Breathing in, release with a hum. Mm. Breathing in. One last time now. Mm. And now we'll be in silence for just a few moments. 
feeling those shifts and changes. And just because silence is not the friend of uh, people who are listening and watching anything, I'll begin again, but I can just tell you that my eyes are still closed for a moment mm. because I am kind of blissed out for want of a better. And we've done that three times. Yeah. Can you imagine if you mm. did this longer? I am feeling such a state of bliss already. It's incredible. And do you have a practice? Do you do this on a daily basis? And yes. how long would you recommend for people to integrate this into their daily lives? Well, you know, we probably would say just three to five breaths. And that's also what they recommend for doing uh, the nasal nitric oxide uh, breathing. But we then would say move on to three minutes or well, five it, minutes. Yeah. Well, what we do is we do have a, he, a humming practice that we do every day. And of course, we will hum and then go into a meditation. So we'll hum for about five minutes, which, you know, can be a reasonably extended time for humming. But what I like to say, what Jonathan and I both like to say is, whatever feels comfortable for you in the moment. Because as I was saying, you had that little headache this morning. Mm, I just hummed, you know, for a couple of minutes. But whatever you can do uh, to shift your uh, stress level, to shift your uh, anxiety, to shift those parts of you that are out of balance, humming can bring you right back into balance and would also just one more thing if you hum for five minutes make five minutes time to be mm -hmm. in a state of silence and just sit there because you can get not only very very high but also if you have something that you immediately need to do after that you know picking up the kids at school or going to catch a bus or go whatever you might be so dizzy that uh, you know, not be able to get up properly. So uh, you have to allow five minutes afterwards. Sound for five minutes, be in silence for five minutes so you can integrate and also get back into your body. Mm -hmm. It's that powerful. Mm -hmm. That makes so much sense. I love that you share the importance of silence because I felt like I really needed that extra time and space to allow the vibrations to kind of wash over me. And um, I'm curious um, does humming help with relationships? I know that in your your book that you mentioned, you know, prior to getting into a fight, you know, perhaps doing some humming together, like you just seem like you have such a beautiful relationship and partnership. I want to know if that has helped in your union. A absolutely. <laughs> And of course, fact, we don't we don't need to do that very often. Well, but we we, well. have, we have another uh, book called Chakra Frequencies that's uh, very very wonderful, and it's got a whole chapter. Oh, thank oh you, you got it, Emily. And it's got, thank it's you. It's got a whole chapter on using the hum or an ohm or self created sound to get in resonance mm -hmm. with your partner. I'm going to let my psychotherapist wife talk more about this because I think she might have suggested it originally. <laughs> well, the 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 real uh, uh, important factor is that with your partner or with your kids, with anybody that you know you want to eventually you know be in relationship with what you'll do is you'll make a verbal contract with each other when you are in a balanced place and you will say, Hey, when we get out of balance or we're having, you know, uh, some kind of disagreement or, uh, we feel frustrated with each other, whatever, uh, one of us, please have the consciousness to say, okay, sweetheart, let us hum, or let us own, own whatever, you let's, know. let's own together. And so if you make that verbal contract, then when you find yourself in that really difficult place, so one of you will have the presence of mind to say, All yeah, right, you honey, have to both agree in it. Cause when you're angry with each other, probably that's the last thing. If you want to use sound, you probably want to, you know, cuss somebody <laughs> out and that's not what you want to do. So one of us will go, okay, let's give me yeah, your hands and we will go. just go, please let's hum okay. together. Uh -huh. sweetheart. All right, all right, all right. Okay. 
And we will do that for however long we need to, but we, I will tell you, it's not a, very it's long. It's amazingly fast, because first of all, you start feeling real good, the endorphins <laughs> and all this other stuff kick in, and all of a sudden you begin to entrain and vibrate together, and all of a sudden you realize, wow, well, what were we we're fighting, fighting about? about? <laughs> we're fighting, the, 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 the roast was overcooked, or, you know, uh, you forgot to, you know, I was like, what? And, and it's... And it's and so many times after we do that, like I'll start laughing and going, oh my God, what were we just being so out of, you know, yeah. out of sync with? So we share that with you, with your audience. Because it's so yeah. great. You can do it with your kids. You can do it with a spouse, with friends, anything like that. It's such a simple yet effective tool for creating resonance between two people. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that yeah. up, Emily. We always really love to share Beautiful. that thank exercise because that can really be helpful for people. Yeah. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. I was just going to ask if that would be an example of an entrainment and it sounds like it is because you're exactly. really yeah. coming into resonance. And you get also, when that happens, when you make sound together, you get the release of, uh, not only your endorphins, but you get the release of oxytocin, which is the trust hormone. So you mm -hmm. kind of can't help it. It's yeah. really an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I am definitely inviting listeners to give that a try. If that resonates, I'm definitely going to be trying that myself. And I want to be sensitive of your time. I know you have another engagement, but will you share with us about World, World Sound Healing Day that's coming up? And all of that, dear, may we effectively share with uh, uh, Emily about that, because I think that's so important. Oh, and we really want to not let that go slip by in this interview, because it is coming up on February 14th. And the day of love. And World Sound Healing Day is our, we're coming up now on our 21st World Sound Healing Day. And uh, bottom line, to make a long story, because we could devote an hour <laughs> to this one. About 21 years ago, we were in deep meditation. This being said, it's time for you to bring awareness of the uses of sound for healing from a personal to a planetary. We thought, great, transmission got cut off, and we had to figure out how to do it. And we decided that we'd, number one, find a day when people could make sacred sound intentionalized with the energy of love and compassion and send it out to the planet we decided that valentine's day would be a wonderful day mm -hmm. to do that so february 14th and we initially worked with the ah sound because that's the sound of the ha heart a lot of people work with the whether it's mama or buddha or krishna or tara mm -hmm. whomever the ah sound it's the sound we make when we're in love so we and we have a website, which is worldsoundhealingday.org. And number one, people can download a free asan for them to use anytime, but particularly also in conjunction with this, but also with regard to World Sound Healing Day. It used to be uh, we would have uh, events happening in localized places throughout the planet. And then we had the lockdown and it became more virtually oriented mm -hmm. and actually more powerful because more and more people were able to be involved. So usually on uh, by the time World Sound Healing Day uh, rocks around, we probably got a couple of hundred different events that people can participate in or create from at least, oh, 20, 30, 40 different countries or mm -hmm. more, it's you know, because it's just uh, growing right mm -hmm. now. Well, and once you go to worldsoundhealingday.org, you will see uh, lots of information. Lots and of information. you and there's a portal that you can enter where you can actually uh, list uh, a group or a facility uh, a group that you may be facilitating, or you can go as a participant and go to any of the groups. But I want to say the purpose of World Sound Healing Day. The reason that we created it was to bring global harmony and planetary healing and peace through sound to Mother Earth. And so that was the, you know, the very foundational purpose of why we 
created World Sound Healing Day. And so now after 21 years, it has just got a life of its own and it is so all-inclusive. Anybody, you can participate or you can facilitate. You can go and and just whatever feels comfortable and any sound that you want yeah. to make. We started out with the ah sound because that was what we thought, oh, we'll make the ah sound, you know, for however long with the intention of healing Mother Earth. And now, of course, we've expanded we, to yeah, any sound. Right. We got bowls, we got bells, we got gongs, we got jazz, we got mantra. We got guided meditations, whatever you want. And Emily, you know, with your uh, bowls back there, you can perhaps do a, a pre-record or whatever and post it on there because it's all great. And two things that I want to say. We say that we send a sonic valentine to the Gaia Matrix, our Mother Earth. The sonic, uh, in the Gaia Matrix is the term that I use uh, for the energy, the field of consciousness of the Earth. It used to be called the noosphere that I... Uh, Scientist and Jesuit uh, priest by the name of Thierry Desjardins came up with, oh, in the last century. And since then, there have been so many organizations from like HeartMath, you're probably familiar with, and the Global Consciousness Project, which is able to measure events of great compassion. And this stuff is real. There's a field that we can interface with. And when you get your heart and your brain, your brain and your heart, which are usually unified through the energy of sound, but the brain and the heart, when they are in a state of coherence, when they are entrained together, are anywhere from 50 to 500 to even 5,000 times greater. And then when you add the element of sound, it's even greater, which is one of the reasons why the different prayers on our planet are vocalized, the whispered chanted, spoken or sung, but that's because prayer and voice amplifies the power of prayer and meditation and makes it even greater. How about that? Mm, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And yes, there are events from all over the world taking place on World Sound Healing Day. So we will absolutely leave that in the show notes for listeners. You can go to worldsoundhealingday.org. And also on healingsounds.com, there is just an array of incredible information, books, instruments, courses. So we will leave both of those links below. Jonathan and Andy, this has been such an incredible, inspiring, uplifting conversation. I just want to thank you and honor you both for all the work that you're doing in the world. Oh, uh, thank Emily, you, oh, Emily. Emily. And we like to say, we heal ourselves. We heal the planet. We heal the planet. We heal ourselves. We have a choice and we can make a difference. And, and Emily, thank you so much for all that you're doing uh, in the world of sound. And this has been just a delightful interview today. Totally. And we hope that we have been of service uh, through sound to your audience. That's well, blessings of joy. light and love through sound to you and everyone who will ever see or listen to this. May our vibrations go forth to the universe to create a higher consciousness for all beings. Mm. Blessings to everyone.